About a year ago, I was looking into what all it would take to get my pilot's license, how much it would cost, and what the training would look like. But no matter what I searched or how hard I looked, I couldn't find a clear outline and explanation of what the process looked like. So I decided to document my entire journey from beginning to end, from online ground school to finally getting my private pilot's license. Before starting any training, I booked a discovery flight for me and my wife with a friend of mine who's an instructor. I wanted to make sure that not only was this something that I wanted to do, but I also wanted my wife to be familiar with what general aviation flying looked like and to make sure she had a frame of reference for what I was about to embark on. After going up around the pattern a few times and doing a few landings, I was absolutely hooked. After another conversation with my wife, we decided that I would officially start pursuing my pilot's license. In its simplest form, you need to do two things to get your license. You need to pass a written exam and you need to pass a practical exam, which consists of two portions, the oral and the flight portion. I decided to go ahead and knock out my written portion before starting my flying to expedite the flight portion of my training. I started by signing up for Sporty's online ground school. There are several other fantastic online ground schools available, but I chose Sporty's just because I was familiar with them. Instead of doing ground school online, you could also get instruction from a CFI at your local flight school. Check that out. That's my endorsement so I can actually go to a testing center and take my private pilot's license for written tests. Nice. Hi guys, I'm on my way to the airport right now to take my private pilot's license written exam. So, uh, wish me luck. The written portion was pretty straightforward. It's a 60 question test that you take on a computer and you have to get a 70% or higher to pass. Well, you guys, I passed. So I've officially taken the written portion so and passed it, so now I'm good to go. I can do all my instruction, and um, you don't need to take the, pass the test in order to do instruction, but now that I've kind of gotten that out of the way, I feel like I'm a lot more well prepared for, the, for all the instruction that I'm gonna be doing in the plane, and it, hopefully things will just go a little quicker, a little smoother, so nice. So with the written portion of the certificate out of the way, I switched my focus to the flight requirements. There is a very specific list of different types of flying you need to do with your CFI and how many hours of each you need. You need a total of 40 hours of flight time minimum. Once you reach 40, you can legally take your check ride, but it's totally up to your CFI whether or not you're ready. So you may end up flying more than that. Of those 40 hours, 20 of them need to be with your CFI giving you instruction. Those 20 hours need to include three hours of cross country training, three hours of night flying, three hours by reference only to instruments, and three hours of check ride prep specifically. You also need to have at least 10 hours of solo flight time, of which five hours has to be cross country. All of these requirements have some other sub requirements, so take a look at the FAA regulations for those details. On the day of my first flight lesson, we practiced a bunch of maneuvers like slow flight, stalls, and steep turns. You'll keep practicing these maneuvers throughout most of your training because they make up the majority of your check ride. We also started practicing some landings. My instructor pretty much gave me full reign of the controls from the very first takeoff, although I'm sure he was adding in little inputs here and there, especially during landing. For the most part, all of your initial training is geared towards making sure that you have full control of the airplane so that you can finally go up by yourself for your first solo. Mine started out like any normal day. My CFI and I went up around the pattern a few times, then he told me to taxi back to the ramp. He got out, told me to go up and do the same thing again. Two touch and goes and one full stop. It's easy to feel like you're not prepared for your first solo, but rest assured, your CFI is not gonna send you up if you're not ready. Aviation is all about safety, and if they didn't think that you could safely solo the airplane, they wouldn't sign off on it. So trust your CFI when they tell you you're ready to solo, and trust that all of your hard work up until this point will get you through it. So as I pushed the throttle to full power for takeoff, my body took over. Without even realizing it, I was verbally talking through my checklists and focusing on the flight so much that I didn't even have time to be nervous. Once you set the plane down for that last landing, that's when it hits you. You just flew an airplane all by yourself. I can't overstate the feeling of accomplishment I felt after landing the plane. I did that, all me. There's no safety net in place and I instinctively fell back on my training to get it done. <laughs> yeah! Since you need a total of 10 hours solo and only five of it is cross country, I chose to do the rest of it in the pattern. 
so I went out by myself a few more times when the weather was nice. And since I was by myself, this is when I really got to focus on perfecting my radio voice. And I have that traffic in sight, 907 Foxtrot. 907 Foxtrot, traffic ahead is for the option number two, clear touch and go. Clear touch and go, 907 Foxtrot. All right, everybody, this is my third time soloing. I'm just gonna be doing some uh, some work in the pattern, just working on touch and goes. Just looking for my five hour minimum requirement for the solo portion of the pattern. After this, I think what it's gonna be is some cross country prep and I'm uh, gonna fly some cross country with my instructor. We're gonna fly the same routes that I'm gonna eventually be doing myself. And then I'm required, once I've been cleared on those particular routes with my instructor, I'm gonna take those exact same routes for five hours by myself solo. So then I'll have an additional five hours solo, but this time it'll be cross country instead of pattern flying. Which by one, nine or seven, Fox Drive, one way one, make left traffic, clear for takeoff. Left traffic, clear for takeoff, nine or seven, Fox Drive. Next, my CFI and I decided to tackle the solo cross countries, but first he had to review my flight plan and accompany me on the trip first so he could sign me off to land at the destination airports. All right, there it is. Hey, right there, right up there. What you doing there? Oh, I'm slaving. After he signed me off, it was once again up to me to make the 150 nautical mile journey on my own. If the reality of flying an airplane didn't hit you when you first soloed, then it'll hit you here, out in the open country and outside of a gliding distance of an airport. After that, we did night flight, which is pretty straightforward. You just need three hours of night flight, including one cross-country trip of over 100 nautical miles in distance, and 10 takeoffs and landings to a full stop. We went ahead and knocked this all out in a single night. After that, we moved on to flying by reference to instruments. For me, this meant the incredibly attractive Foggles. You have to log three hours of flight with the Foggles actually on. For touch and go with the departure to the east. This part of the training was particularly fun for me because I got to fly in a plane with an amazing Garmin suite of avionics. We also went over unusual attitude recovery during this flight, which is actually quite a bit of fun. Recover. Did you? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Good job. My flight control. Your flight control. From here, the only real thing left to do was to prepare for my check ride. That meant doing the maneuvers in the ACS over and over again until it was hard to get it wrong. And right about there. Hold what you got on the pitch. No more pitch. There you Once go. I was comfortable with all the maneuvers, I had everything I needed for my check ride. The DPE was pretty booked, so it wasn't scheduled for about another month. I kept flying as often as I could to keep my skills sharp and so that I would remain proficient. I kept studying all my material until the check ride date came. Once I sat down in front of the examiner, my training and preparation all kicked in, and I felt comfortable talking about the topics he asked me about. We sat in that room for about an hour. After that portion of the check ride, we took a quick break and then continued on to the flight portion. I would have filmed all this, but I wanted to focus on passing. Plus, I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to do that, or else I would have seen some videos on YouTube. After we landed, he shook my hand and congratulated me on receiving my certificate. We snapped a classic photo and headed home so I could take my first and favorite passenger on the flight that I had promised her. Wanna be in it together? Yeah. What's up guys, it's Matt, guess what? Finally got my private pilot certificate and this is my first real flight as a private pilot carrying my very first passenger, my beautiful wife, Lee. <laughs> All said and done, it took me about nine months from decision to check ride and that was going at a pretty moderate pace. I went into my check ride with about 45 flight hours and financially the whole process cost me about $7,500. Huge shout out to my instructor, Justin, for being so patient with me and my flight school, Greenville Aviation, for helping me along this journey. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to like, comment, and please share with your friends who are interested in getting involved in aviation. This has definitely been one of the most challenging but rewarding things I've ever done, 
and I can't wait to share all of our adventures with you guys. Fly safe, y'all, and I'll see you up there.